I know, I know, guys. Pegasus isn't supposed to be playing Exodia. I feel you, but I did. It's a lot of fun. What's going on, guys? Pegasus from the Wise Guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. This deck is a lot of fun. Um, I've got like X1 with it a couple of times. Just been messing around with it in locals and, and online tournaments. There's a very frustrating factor that you're just going to have to deal with the deck, but the deck is absolutely gas, and there are several different versions. This is the control version, and there definitely is a Horus version that I will be covering again. It is literally that good. Guys, of course, we got to start with the Forbidden One, the Stanky Legged Forbidden One, the other Stanky Legged Forbidden One, and of course, both of the arms. Self-explanatory, you got to have all five pieces. Uh, try to get the head that's ulti, and hopefully I, I can get the LOBs. Shout out to, shout out me, shout me out in the comments if you can. Hit me up with the LOBs. I will trade for them. I just am having a hard time finding them. But, uh, you know, the ulti is just so darn good looking. But, yeah, guys, this deck has a high brick factor, including these five. You'll obviously, I'll just show a test hand just so you kind of get where I'm coming from if you've never played this deck. Sinjin, um, Caveman, I think his name is in the OCG. Um, he's the old school card that was a normal monster that was 2750 and 2500 defense. Um, he cannot be destroyed by monster effects, and then you get to use each of his following effects uh, once a turn. He makes himself a continuous spell, and then he specials himself, reveals an Ankh, or pays 2000. And it's not quite cost the same way you, you're kind of uh, accustomed to, so I just want to kind of point that out. You don't pay, and then you can get stopped. And they activate and resolve where they are, continuous spells, when they're in the back row. And you get to pretty much search everybody. He can search himself and he can search all the Millennium cards. Very, very important. And most of the lines, you either want to start with shield or you want to start with this. And it's an eight, which for anybody that might be concerned about picking up the Horus package, this would be another generic eight that you can pick for any deck that you would consider playing level eights in. Centurion, for example. Next up, we got shield of the Millennium Dynasty. You got to play three, um, the old school shield, Millennium Shield. Um, this one obviously has the same kind of effect, except it says cannot be destroyed by spell or trap effects, which is very, very key because people do forget that and we'll try to, you know, it's always going to be a defense so you don't have to worry about lightning storm. But there's just, you know, like board wipes that people are playing, the red gekis, the dark holes that comes up and that's come up several times when I'm playing against Tenpai and they had a hard time kind of pushing through and, and doing enough damage through an Exodia and this. So it's very, very key. But this card is the Ankh Searcher, the Fusion Spell Searcher. Very, very important, and it's almost as important as that first Searcher. And sometimes in certain hands, you will need to go after this instead, just because you want to get to Ankh and not pay life, especially as you get closer to time. The shield is absolutely nutty. And the level 5 thing will be a, a, a point of emphasis in the extra deck because I'm, I'm working on something. Next up, we got Double uh, Golem the Guards. Uh, Golem the Guards searches the Field Spell, so searches the Ankh. Searches the field spell, searches everybody. And then obviously you got the Wedge U Temple can put these pieces in the back row and grab any of these. I'm not playing the Reflection. Um, he's okay, but he kind of is contingent upon what your opponent can do. These is level sixes. Uh, obviously him being able to block Ash is probably his most relevant effect. Uh, being able to stop uh, the Ankh from being... Uh, Basically, I'm, I'll get it out just so you guys can know where I'm coming from. Just so the Ankh can, can go through successfully, I feel like that's probably the most applicable thing. He's a level 6. You can play because you're playing Shifter in the deck if you're playing this control version. You can play uh, M7 and uh, Shifter loop somebody twice. I don't think it's worth it. But, um, you know, if you can, you don't use your normal summon, you can just end up putting a piece on the board or you can like normal summon a shifter over one of the other cards that you, you've you already kind of played. And shifter's a level six. It's something trippy that I'm working with, but I definitely see the ac the accessibility for an M7. Uh, I don't think Beatrice is necessary because you don't need anything in the graveyard. These are just ideas, guys. Um, this, is, this deck is an engine. It's a control deck. It's an aggro deck. This deck's a lot of fun, honestly. It's a lot of different ways that you can take it. And then the way that I'm taking it uh, right after I'm done wrapping this version up is all uh, is almost twice as fun as this one. And this one is insanely fun as well. Uh, triple Lava Golem, I'm not using my normal summon. Now, the touching point, the teaching point on this deck is you're not using your normal summon. So if there's any idea you have where the normal summon is extraordinary, like let's say Buster Blader or something, I'm just using a random example. 
if you stand and you don't want to, I don't like lava gold. Try anything that you, you really like the normal summon. The normal summon is insane. This deck goes off without even normal summoning. So that is something that I kind of want to explain. The engine of using all of these cards back here this is absolutely insane. If you're playing a control deck, you can just lava gold on people. And I'm playing some hand traps. So hand traps plus board breakers is usually how you win. Trust me on that. Uh, getting into the hand traps that matter. Three shifter uh, until they hit it. Just is what it is. You know, it's the best card in the game, to be honest. And there's no reason to not play the best card in the game. Uh, you can play the horse package and you can start making cuts. As you, you can see, they're kind of obvious in this deck. But this is like the streamline, dumb down, let's get it over with. Let's OTK them, let's control them. Let's not let them have fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Triple shifter. And then obviously you can double this and use this as an M7 in the extra. So you can like normal this and then use the goal on the guards and an overlay and make an M7. You can shifter somebody again. So that, that is something I wanted to point out. I may do a combo video on that. You know, I don't need, think you need to see that, but just a tech idea. It's like an idea that I feel like is absolutely stupid. Um, I'm playing some tuners and the tuners will make a lot more sense uh, when I get into the extra deck. Uh, three Dogwood, shout out to uh, all the Kansas City players, uh, Vincent and Jacoby. They're amazing, amazing, amazing players that we've had on the page. Uh, triple Dogwood, Triple Ash. Um, Ash, yes, it's eh, but it's still good enough against everybody else that it's still pretty strong and I feel like whenever people veer away from Ash, and everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't be playing that. That's when people like Brandon show up and then kick your face. I, I just, I have not regretted um, keeping this in. And it kind of is my, the, the final cuts to any time I was doing doing well with the deck, it was because I was still playing Ash. And I was, I was like rotating the Ashes in with this and I was like, just play both. Dogwood in this deck is an OTK enabler because he goes up to the attack that your life points are equal to. So Dogwood, you can be at 20,000, okay, he, uh, Exodia, the Unstoppable Exodia is going to go up to 20-something thousand. Good luck. So it's not just, oh, he's playing Dogwood. Oh, I'm just going to go off. It's not going to matter. It will matter. And then, of course, if you, like, overdraw these, again, we're going to get in the extra. We're going to get in the extra. It absolutely does come up. Rounding out the deck, uh, the consistency, you got to play Prosperities. There's no reason to not play this mathematical um extraordinary uh I, there's not enough adjectives pot of prosperity is pot of prosperity there's no need to even talk about it millennium Op, um obviously with golem the guards i really feel like that was relevant um so they couldn't block the arc i kept putting golem the guards again that earth guy that you saw over here i kept putting him at, him out first um this gets to it first sometimes you just need to get straight to Ankh. so sometimes this will be viable to search over this which is weird because if you feel like this is going to get stopped and then not you know it's like it's it's i feel like this is the most of the time the correct but this is like the secondary starter so all these new decks that they keep making all have secondary starters this is the the, the wheelhouse of the deck uh, millennium also shuffles back into the deck so this deck has a really hard time decking out because it just keeps putting itself back in the deck especially after you activate it enough said uh, double wedge you. Um, the field spell is not good enough. It's not good enough and it doesn't generate like advantage. You have to have something in your hand to be able to do something. So it's dependent. So whenever field spells like that, you don't need three of it. You just need to kind of use it out. But the wedge you can put something in the back row uh, from your hand, which can, can definitely come up and unbrick you, especially if you draw the Exodia pieces. You can use wedge you temple to go and grab these pieces so, I mean, you know, it is what it is. That's pretty strong. I feel like it's relevant enough. And the most relevant field spell that you're playing is Secret Village of the Spellcasters. I, I've thought about even bumping this up. You, can, uh, you know, you're ending with a very, very powerful boss monster that's a spellcaster with Secret Village. Good luck trying to play. Uh, double Cyclone. Um, I feel like I wanted something that can do well with the dice rolls. And setting this is also very, very strong because everybody has some kind of field spell that is absolutely ignorant and or they just have a, a really, really good card. I have thought about playing this deck to just go hard second. And if you do, this could just be like Feather Duster and Lightning Storm, which is my side deck. Anyway, set rotation and terraforming uh, for the field spells that you just saw. Called by the Grave because it's just generically extremely powerful. Obliterate Blaze is the way to OTK them. 
Again, you could change the theory on this deck and then just go after them and try to, uh, you basically blow your back row up and then equip all the pieces of Exodia to the fusion that you have on the field, which the fusion can set this. So when it just get, gets passed back to you on each end phase, you just set this, then you activate this, then you kill them. Very, very powerful. Double Exod uh, of Rage. Again, I think you only need one. If you're playing two and you're feeling like it's gonna be a grind and a lot of these decks are just hard to take out in that one wave, this card says destroy everybody. Can't say enough about this card. And there's obvious uh, tech choices in the deck that just make this card even better. So we're gonna get there. Angel Statue is the last card because, you know, Rabbit setting this too good, too strong. I do feel that uh, this is probably the most solved the, this control version of the, the side deck is going to be, but there is one card that I'm really, really trying. Um, I'm not maining. There can be, you can main it, um, but I, I prefer the hand traps because you just can't allow these combo decks to just wobble and, and you can't come back from them. Even if you do have a lava goal, I just wanted a combination of the two. This is a board breaker as well, but I just feel like it's better off when you're going uh, first and you can kind of protect it with the fusion, anti-spell, in unison again with Exods of Rage, they set a whole lot of spells. They're gonna, you're gonna destroy a whole lot of spells. Oh, they're under Shifter too. That happened. Trust me, I apologize to the guy. It seemed like he's having a hard night anyway. That was absolutely ignorant. Uh, the tech that I'm trying, uh, Eye of Illusion. I just picked this up, and I'm, I haven't, I can't give you any feedback on it. I know it's a good card. Um, when you have the fusion, again, when you have the fusion. You're kind of playing Protect the Castle, and this card has three different effects. Just help you guys zoom in just a tad bit. It says, your illusion and spellcaster monsters cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. Really, really stupid. During your opponent's turn, target one face-up monster your opponent controls and take control of it. So it's kind of like a, a quick snatch steal or enemy controller, I guess. And then the third effect says, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, target one face-up monster your opponent controls except the attacking monster and then change the attack target to it. So you can, you know, you can make your opponent hit themselves. So having this with this on the field, I feel like it's a, a going first option. There's probably a better card. You probably play another floodgate. Um, good luck finding out what it is. You'll figure something out, but this card is stupid and I wanted to try it. I feel like thrust and talents aren't good in this deck because you just need to deal directly with what the board state is because the card, you just don't have enough card economy to, to keep up. You just need to kind of like blanket whatever they're trying to do. Speaking of blanket, you just blanket out whatever in the world they're doing. And if it's a deck that's like a link deck, then most of the time the bit there can be is gonna beat that, you know, like Salomon Great or something, that's just gonna beat that anyway, most of the time. Uh, barrier for everybody else. Droll for everybody that over searches and you just wanna get the match over with. Triple Super Poly for the board breakers because yeah, <laughs> yeah, too too good. And then he's he's a dark that that'll come up. You'll figure something out. I have thought about uh, running some kind of Ubel package somewhere in this, just because I feel like Super Poly could only get better. And then I would it would almost I feel like you could main it, you could figure something out. But Dogwood just tested out to be better than this for the time being. But you know it is what it is. When I know I'm going second, more board breakers. You guys saw all of the, the, the rest of the deck, the, the Cyclones in the main deck. This is just kind of sweeping everything else. And again, evenly is kind of weird, so I didn't even want to try it. And I want to OTK, which I do a lot. Because of the dogwood stuff, um, the life points in, with your opponent can get different. You can normal summon with the level eight, singeing you with the level threes and get to it very, very quickly. Um, you're gonna pay life points. Again, when you use the fusion, you're going to pay during your standby phase. So sometimes through either the monster effects that you guys saw in here, as well as some of the other effects, your life points are just gonna drop drastically and then Psychic Game Punisher can just come in and clean the game up. Um, I've had this impermed before, and then I just normal summoned a hand trap. I was way lower than them, and I attacked for game. So like this, this is a, this, this card is stupid, and that's why I'm playing uh, six Ghost Sisters. That just it just worked out so smooth. Um, I'm also thinking about a Valor because this is a ten, right? 
And then so the 10 plus the one, the Baylor, this is like another way to get to it. But like Baylor, I feel like I just don't want to exchange with people like that. You don't want to go one for one in a deck that's this good. It's not a blanket hand trap, if that makes any sense. The Super Poly targets, I'm playing Guru or Mud Dragon and Predator Plant, uh, Dragostoparia. The, again, this is um, an eight that has also come up where you're kind of super poly, normal hand trap, and I've been lower than that. You know, it's 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 very, very good. Just just trust me, it's very, very good. And all of the, the rest of the Exodia stuff just works so beautifully with this that just normally a hand trap, you don't use your normal, it really comes up. These clean up everything else. And then obviously if they maximus you, well, you're just you're just sitting pretty. Uh, Scylla Hat Rabbit, very, very powerful card. Um, can't say enough. Moon, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, Access Code. This, this stuff is kind of, uh, there's no point. You're not gonna really make anything but the Fusion, the Super Poly Targets, this and Riser. Everything else you're just kind of messing around with. And I, I didn't want to play Exceeds that would be specific. Like again, like I said, M7, you can play M7, I guess, somewhere in here. There's probably something I'm missing. I feel like I was missing something in my extra but everything else was just working out beautifully. Santafon maybe is the last card I was trying to think of, but uh, Zeus and Dingursu, this has an extraordinary win percentage and the two level eights, that happens a lot. The Horus package with this stuff, this only gets even better. And then Underworld, because you know, the moon plus her, goodness gracious. Guys, I really enjoy this deck. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna be trying like a hard go second version. There definitely is uh, extreme potency to the, the Horus version, and there's just a whole lot to test. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I, myself, am out. Appreciate you for tuning in. Arrivederci. I should probably let uh, Moto out of the Shadow Realm, you know. He's got a new deck. <laughs>